Hey everyone, Singleton Sean here, and today we're going to be exploring more responsive solutions in WPF. So this solution was actually inspired by one of my subscribers, Gareth, and he basically wants a wrap panel that looks good. So if we look at wrap panels in general, I actually shared this off in the first episode of the series, but as you can see, as we wrap, they just kind of wrap however they feel like it. Now we have two on the top, one on the bottom, then we go to one top, two bottom, and then they finally stack vertically, but then another issue is that they're not the same widths, and it just looks really ugly. So what Gareth wants is basically a panel where when the screen's large enough, they all stack horizontally, and then as the screen gets smaller, ideally we would just want one on the bottom like this, but we would still want them to be equal width so it looks good, and then as we continue to wrap, eventually they all stack vertically, and they all have the same width. So of course one way we could fix this is if we gave all of the items the same width of say 300 and then we check this out they look good you know we get bigger they stack correctly they wrap pretty nicely but then when we get too small we shouldn't be using this width anymore because this width is greater than the width of the panel. So there's a couple ways we can solve this you could use the responsiveness behavior that we built last episode and you could configure this item width to be say like 300 when the screen is wide enough and then make the item width as big as the screen when the screen gets too small. But I want to show off something new in this video so we're actually going to be making a custom panel. So let's go into our project and let's add a new folder and I'm just going to call this controls. And inside here, we're going to create a new, just regular C-sharp class. And I'm actually going to call this the Gareth panel. So see, if you make a suggestion to this series, if you have any questions, you might get a WPF control named after you. So pretty exciting stuff. Might want to put out your suggestions if you have any. Of course, if you're following along with this video, you probably don't want to name your panel Gareth panel. So you can go ahead and name it something like flex panel, flex wrap panel. So let's go ahead and make this a public class and we are actually going to inherit from wrap panel. So this Gareth panel is a wrap panel. It's going to have the same exact functionality of a wrap panel. But we don't actually want this to be like a wrap panel. We need something more. So what I want to do is I want to have a property on this panel. In fact, let's define it right now. It's going to be a dependency property and we're going to call it requested item width and it's going to be a double the inner class of course is going to be the Gareth panel and by default the value is going to be 0 but not 0 it has to be 0, 0.0 because if you make this an integer and this is a type of double it's going to get mad yeah I mean you would expect that he would know to cast an integer 0 to a double but you have to actually specify 0, 0.0 let's go ahead and import all this so we have this dependency property requested item width. So my goal for this panel is when the screen is wider than this requested item width, then all the items inside the panel are going to get this width. But if the screen is less than this requested item width, then all the children of the panel are going to have their width set to the size of the panel, not the requested item width, because we can't support that the panel is not wide enough. So how are we going to do this? Well, there's actually a magical method on all WPF UI elements that we can override. And this is measure override. So this method is going to get called whenever the panel needs to be measured. So essentially, whenever the screen changes size, this method is going to be called. So this method receives a size, and this is how much room we have to work with in our Gareth panel. So this will probably be the size of the window in our case, but it really doesn't matter. This is pretty much just the size that we have to work with. So anything we do, we're going to be using this size. So let's go over that logic that we want to implement. So first, let's get the requested width. So this is what we would ideally want the children of this panel to have as their width if the panel is large enough to support the width. So let's get that, and that's just going to reference this dependency property that we set on the control. And after that, we want to get the panel width. So this is how much space our panel is going to occupy, and basically how much space we have to work with. 
and that's going to use this constraint that gets passed in the measure override and it's going to be the width. So now if that panel width is less than the requested width that we have then we need to actually set the requested width to the panel width. So by doing this the requested width is either going to be how much we actually request or it's going to be coerced to the size of the panel. And now that we have that width, we can set it on all the children of the panel. So these are going to be UI elements, we'll call them child. And this is going to use internal children, so that is the content of the Gareth panel. And what we're going to do is call child.setValue. And this will set the value of a dependency property. So the property we want to set is the width property. And we're going to set that to the requested width. So you might be wondering why didn't I just use the actual width property instead of using this dependency property. Well the reason for that is that UI elements don't actually have a width. The width property is actually defined on subtypes of UI elements such as framework element, basically any WPF control, text blocks, text box, labels, all those things. So we could cast this child to a framework element, something that has a width property but we're just simply going to use set value and pass in the dependency property that we want to set. So believe it or not, we're now actually ready to use this panel. So let's go into our views. Let's create a new item here. And it's just going to be user control. And we'll call this the user cards Gareth panel view. And what I'm going to do actually is just copy everything from the wrap panel view place that in here and let's grab that component namespace and we're going to need another namespace here and this is going to be controls and it's going to point to the controls namespace and we're doing that so that we can use our brand new Gareth panel like that and now instead of item width we're going to use requested item width and this is going to be 300 and that of course is that dependency property that we defined up here. So now that we have this, let's go into our main window and let's swap in that panel. So this is going to be the user cards Gareth panel view. And now we're ready to test this out. So here we go. We have our panel still wraps correctly. And as we get smaller, it wraps as we expect. As it gets smaller, now we are vertical. But what happens when we get really small? Is it going to shrink automatically? and it does but it seems that the child is still taking up too much space so why is that well if we look inside of our panel we have this margin set on the children and we need to account for that margin when we set the requested width so what we need to do is get the margin of the child and we can use that by calling child.get value and we want to get the value of the margin property, the margin dependency property. And of course, get value returns an object, so we need to cast this to a thickness. And again, same thing. UI elements don't actually have a margin property that we can grab, so we have to use this get value function and pass in the dependency property that we want. But now that we have this margin, we can subtract the left and right values from the requested width. And now, our child shouldn't take up too much space. So let's go ahead and check this out. Here we go, we get big, now we get small. And there we go, perfect. So, when the screen is really small, everything stacks vertically. As we get larger, the wrap panel unwraps. And there we go, they're all stacked horizontally now. Okay, so I thought we were done, but we have a little bit of an issue here. So if we don't specify the requested item width, then we get an exception. So the reason for that is because our requested width is zero by default. And then after we subtract the margin, we are setting the width to a negative number. And that's not okay. So first off, what we need to do is make sure that this can never be set to a negative number. So what we're gonna do is calculate our width right here and that's going to be the requested width minus the margins 
and this actually needs to be a double of course and then if this width is less than zero then we are going to set the width to zero and by doing this the width can never be less than zero so let's go ahead and set that as the value for our width property and let's see how this works out so that's great it all works out but of course our width is zero and ideally it's not what we want if we don't specify a width I kinda want this to just behave like a regular wrap panel so all the elements will take up as much space as they need and their width will just be auto and to do that we can set this default value to be double dot not a number so double dot nan and before we do all of this measurement we can check if that requested item width is not a number and if it is a number then we are going to do all of this custom sizing on the children because that means the requested item width was set so we do want to apply that width but if it wasn't set it'll be nan and then we just won't do any of it and it'll behave like a regular wrap panel so let's see how that looks and there we go we have the regular wrap panel and now if I set the requested item with the 300 and now it's behaving like our good old Gareth panel flex panel so there's just a little edge case that you gotta watch out for and one of the biggest takeaways from this is the power of the measure override method so this is actually part of a two-step layout process and this is really important for panels because you can do a lot of powerful things with these if you understand this layout process so what happens is first off this measure override gets called and inside here we get the size that we can work with for our panel so inside here you can measure children set widths and all that and then after measure override it calls this next method called a range override and inside here you can arrange all the children of the panel however you want and for our case with the wrap panel that we inherit from this base dot arrange override actually takes care of wrapping the elements so moving them to the next line when we run out of horizontal space so what's nice about inheriting from wrap panel is that it does that for us and all we needed to do is set up our own measure override and set the widths of the children and you could even do more advanced things in this measure override say you want each child to take up a percentage of the space available rather than a hard-coded width value you could do that in your measure override method so I hope you find this panel useful I hope you guys can use this as inspiration and guidance for your own panels but other than that if you have any questions criticisms or concerns be sure to leave them below in the comments section. And if your question or concern is good enough, you might even inspire me to make a video about it and perhaps even name a panel after you. Aside from that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.